as we start any organization or any institution so there's always a kind of um, motive or like you know the thought process behind it uh, so this uh, leads me to a very fundamental question that i would like to ask dr uh, mary mohan kumar uh, that ma'am uh, uh, that if we go back a little uh, back in time uh, i believe that somewhere around in 2012 uh, this win uh, win initiative the women in nuclear initiative was uh, started and uh, i think probably uh, from that time uh, you had been the sole representative uh, from india at the win global platform uh, but right now like since it has been like you know formally launched as a as an organization a group of uh, people like minded people that have come across so i would like you to elaborate on the uh, mission, mission and the vision the thought process behind you know uh, uh, forming up this win india ma'am thank you sunaina um Shall I start with a small story? You can hear sure. me, right? Okay. Yes, ma'am. So you say, uh, as children, we would have loved to, you know, chase butterflies, dragonflies. I don't know how many of you have engaged in that activity. I have. Well, those days we had a garden and we could afford to do. These days, of course, our children live in concrete jungles. It's a different story. So there is a story about a child which went in search of a butterfly. Butterflies are so. attractive so we need to catch the butterfly not to hurt it but to keep it close by and then you know like we put birds in the cages although i am not for it uh, so the child went in search of this butterfly then found the butterfly sitting on the flower went close by to pick it and immediately it flew away then went to another flower again the child tried doing that in vain and then the third and the fourth and the fifth and by the time the child was really frustrated tired run down and decided to quit that um activity and go to find some other activity to play with and then totally forgot about this uh, chasing process and was busy with the some other activity and then you know what happened suddenly the butterfly came and rested on that child's shoulder so how do you think that child would have felt this is precisely how i felt see you said 2012 no much before that when i joined the institute the win global it was 2005 and then i was immediately appointed uh, requested by the win uh, president to be the representative for india but even before that there were some very very eminent uh, members of the win global okay some of them are no more like for instance dr um, deen shah uh, oncologist there were many more at least about 1520 even before i joined the organization but then ever since 2005 i thought i would do something to create a chapter for win that's the way it was but without any success so after 15 years it has become a dream come true as i have been telling this so now we are i'm very happy that the board members and everybody around are really eminent and we have a diverse uh, um, group of people with expertise in science technology nuclear issues security so what more you need for a launch of this type so here uh, you asked me about the mission and the vision it is not going to be very different from the mission and the mission of the win global i also request you all of you if you haven't gone through the win global site they are a very big very big organization there are so many chapters all around the globe almost all the country and we are lagging behind with so many nuclear scientists in the country of course you know the various difficulties uh, there when we try to project ourselves in the international world whatever happened now finally we have come made a breakthrough so uh, my own experience is was as i was in the radiological safety division and uh, uh, way back in the late 80s itself they started this radiation public awareness program you know kalpakam is a place where we have a reactor we have it's a comprehensive thing we have a um, fast breeder reactor coming up we have the reprocessing facility and so on and so forth and this was not without criticism from the outside world there were quite a lot of anti nuclear lobbyists okay always coming and asking us questions and uh, then came the close by the coulomb coulomb reactor so much of opposition everything was there so the then uh, 
division head suggested that we should have an awareness program not to keep things so secretive. People have a lot of different wrong opinions about nuclear energy and nuclear technology in general. So that's how we started the radiation public awareness program. And I was one of the group. We were about, about 10 people to begin with. All that we used to do is to call the people around us, whatever be their occupation, policemen, uh, teachers, students, nurses, no, we, because these are people who get wrong information. And uh, let me tell you, when, you, even when I used to go to so many colleges, even professors had very little idea about what is this nuclear power, what it's going to do. Most, so all of them were scared about the health effects. They all, the first question will ask, are you not scared to go live there? Are you not going to be exposed to radiation? So because that is because all that they know about nuclear energy is an atomic bomb. That's the one that is being portrayed in the media. So all along it's bombing, it is disaster, it is killing, long-term effects, cancer. This is all that is there in your mind. So the first uh, thing is to tell them, you know, about the truth behind it, the pros and cons. So there's nothing to hide. And then we have to talk about where would India stand be if we have to become a developed nation? Okay, the yardstick which development is assessed is the power utilization. And then India doesn't have other sources of power. We have a hydroelectric power, everything is limited. We have bad quality coal, etc. etc. So we are forced to go into nuclear power. So if nuclear power means then how advanced we are, how safe we are in the technology that we are using. This is what we want to bring out to the public. But that is not always 100% success. Because I told you the lobbyists are always behind. They will say that we are hiding things. We are trying to tell them that everything is fine. Inside something is happening. Two incidents, accidents to take place. We don't say no. But safety is the most important thing. And there is no other industry which has at most safety norms. Now even, even a small uh, problem will shut down the reactor. It's got the, uh, we have to tell them that the reactor has got automatic shutdown processes. And what happened in Chernobyl and elsewhere, we have to tell them that those things were um, not the way that a reactor is run. And that is not the way we are doing it here. So it, it, is, a, it is a lot of problem. It is not an easy job to do. And then much later, you know, what happened when we are seeking, we started a cell, okay, a awareness cell. And then there was quite a number of people. So whenever we used to organize, sometimes we used to call the public, different types of people, into our IT car and give the lectures. Or else we will go out. Okay, we've gone all around and trying to uh, with the uh, collaborations uh, of the particular college, uh, university. They used to make the uh, necessary arrangements, and then we used to uh, bring in the staff. And this is how the public awareness program is going on. It's still going on, and that's that is what uh, DA is doing. Now, what we could do is join hands with them, okay, and do and then we not only talk about. Uh, what we used to do is about the reactor. That is what was frightening them. You see a reactor and man, somebody is living close by them. But that's not the only thing. We have talked about other technologies. The application of medicine. You know, when people come and ask questions, are you not scared to stay in uh, IG Grad? These people would have gone and taken 10, 20 uh, um, CT scans, uh, exposed them to X-rays, mammograms, not knowing that they are exposing themselves to ionizing radiation. The concept of ionizing radiation itself is not gone deep into their mind. Okay, so then we have to talk to them about the what we talk call as the risk versus benefits. So you cannot live. You are taking a flight to Delhi and taking a, coming down here. I said, hey, you, would you like to go in a bus or a train or a bullock cart? So there you are taking a risk. So the same risk exists here, but the safety norms are also in place. So this is how handling the public is a very, very delicate issue. Okay, this is my own experience. Then we come down. Another thing we do is we have to talk to them in the local language. Okay, so this again we found and then we have to come down to their level and make them speak. Otherwise, they are scared to ask this. They think this is a very kind of a, a hi-fi technology. Will I ask the wrong question? This, of course, everybody has when we talk about something which we are not familiar with. Uh, so, this public awareness is one of the major mission of WIN also, would be, in my opinion. 
Now, then there are this is one aspect. The other aspect is of course to uh, attract young people to come to join the, the sector. Okay, so there again, what happens is what is prevailing is a lot of ignorance. People don't know the availability of the um, courses that they may take to join into this sector. Ignorance. They simply, you know, today it's IT world. Okay. Of course, we, we still cannot call everybody to come and join uh, nuclear uh, sciences and engineering because again, it is a very, very narrow down discipline. Everybody cannot become a nuclear scientist. But there may be somewhere in the, some remote corner of India. You take, for instance, our Dr. Abdul Kalam, who's a wealthy come from a very, very uh, obscure village. Did he not become a great scientist? What caused him? You have to ask the, see the history behind that. So, probably when we take this to every nook and corner of the country, we may succeed in bringing out the best among the um, aspiring students by informing them, telling them about all the courses available, the pros and cons, all, all that they can do to help the uh, uh, nuclear industry. So this, in my opinion, is the mission and vision uh, we could think of. Is that all right? Maybe you can proceed with the next question to the next person. Thank you.